Walter until 1992. So he had already, uh, you know, 20 something years been out, out of the war. Uh, you know, we had over a 10 year age, to, you know, little 10 year age difference. So up until then, you know, people that age were like too old for me. <laughs> But then, you know, like, I don't know, when I met Walter, uh, it turned out he wasn't too old for me. He didn't want to talk about the war. He didn't want to talk about Vietnam. I didn't really understand in the beginning of our relationship, you know, what Vietnam meant to him or what, how he was impacted. Just And then as the years went on, the stories became more and more familiar to me. And... Um, well, he, uh, he didn't want anything to do with Vietnam or, or the army um, once, you know, once he got back from Vietnam, he wanted to put it all behind him. Uh, but he was having nightmares, um, you know, 30 years later. But then when he did get sent to Vietnam, he got sent to like the worst, one of the worst places. You know, he got, he was in something called the 11th Armored, Armored Cavalry um, Division, said it was a fire base called Black Horse. Patton was a commanding officer. They were supposed to go on uh, seek and destroy missions, like go into villages and look around. And he used to tell the guys today, uh, we're going to seek and avoid, we're going to stay alive today. I think one of the things that I've learned over the years is that that trauma doesn't go away, that you carry it with you. You know, Walter carried Vietnam throughout his life. There was also aspects of, you know, what people call survivor guilt, like things that he would say, oh, I'm not deserving of this accolade or whatever. One of the things I mentioned earlier was him wanting to put it behind him. He had gotten letters from a bunch of guys who, sit, who wrote to him uh, you know, he probably saved their lives. You know, that's what they had said. And I know a few stories in particular. Um, but, you know, he was a commanding officer. And, uh, you know, he, you know, the guys would go to him and say, I can't do this. I can't go out tomorrow, you know. And then, you know, he'd give them a shot of whiskey and uh, a pep talk, you know, and help people. You know, he helped a lot of people get through it. And, uh you know, he threw all those letters away. He was like, I don't want to carry that with me. I didn't really deserve their praise, maybe, even though he did deserve their praise. He did have PTSD, where, you know, he was a little surprised and it was very painful for him uh, when he would go to talk to the doctor about the PTSD. He really, I was surprised because he was someone who, was pretty vocal about things. He was very upfront about his opinions and beliefs. And to see how it impacted him to talk about this stuff. But I, in the end, I think it was good because he was able to uh, accept it. And you know, it wasn't just a secret thing that he was carrying around. I think some of that talking actually did help him. Walter was like, I'll never let anybody go to war. I'll never let anybody get drafted. I'll hide them in my basement. I'll hide them in the attic. I'll send them to Canada. We'll figure out a way. Walter took him aside and sat him down and said, this is not a video game. This is reality. People will try to kill you. This is not a good uh, life choice for you. And he, I don't know what else he said, but uh, actually, um, yeah, when Walter passed away, um, Lenny's son uh, came up to me and he said, you know, Walter is one of the two people that changed my life. You know, he had such a big impact on me. Walter Kisley was my husband. Uh, we met in 1992. I was in my early 30s and he was in his early 40s. Um, we met in New York City, but he was coming up here on the, he was pretty much had, relocated up here uh, and separated from his second wife at the time. And um, I, so he was the reason that I moved to Ankrum or Gallatin. You know, we, we started out, you know, switching our time back and forth. And then after a couple of years, 
uh, he convinced me to stay up here full time. So we built a really pretty good life together. Um, and then Walter was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in 2017. So <laughs> lucky, unlucky, he was able to have three years instead of just three months. And he would always say to me, um, you know, Carol, I learned in the army, when you think you can't do anymore, you always have a little more in you. You can do anything for one day. Hi, I'm Carol Smiley. I live in Gallatin, New York.